Are you ready? Are you ready for the news time? Yes, my name is Phil Chambers and welcome to the Saturday News. There is no Gareth today, so I'm just going to pile on right through. But before I do, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video and share, comment down below what you think of all of today's stories, including the fact that last night was, of course, the season premiere of SmackDown after the massive long break that we've just had from wrestling. Um, and there was a bunch of stars shown on the season premiere, except they weren't in the ring or in promos or anything, they were just on the screens of the Thunderdome of all places. We saw a whole bunch of people. We saw Jeff Jarrett, he was in the on the screens during the Lars Sullivan match. We saw Brie Bella during the Daniel Bryan return promo. We had Ric Flair in the Street Profits match. We had Mark Henry at the beginning of the main event between Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns. We had a Fox Sports um, on our talent called Bob Stone, he was there too. Keith Lee was shown watching Braun Strowman ahead of their match that's obviously gonna happen on Raw on Monday. And we also got Goldberg being shown during that main event match between Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman. Now, Goldberg is an interesting one uh, because technically he still has matches left on his WWE contract. He was also recently been on Instagram saying, well, that he wants to get back involved with wrestling and hinting that he might want a shot at uh, whoever won the, champion won the championship on, tonight, on last night's show. He said on Instagram, to say I have an interest in tonight's Universal Championship match is an understatement. And then there was a bunch of emojis and hashtags, but including the hashtag, who's next? So, is Goldberg hinting at a possible match with Roman Reigns? Well, like I say, he's still under contract for two years, and that includes two matches per year. Obviously, this year he's already used up both of those matches because he beat the Fiend Bray Wyatt at Super Showdown and then went on to face Braun Strowman at WrestleMania. Now, obviously that match was initially supposed to be against Roman Reigns. The Wrestling Observer Newsletter is reporting recently as well that there's a bit more news about a possible match with Roman Reigns in the long rumored match between The Rock and Roman Reigns. Now, apparently Rock loves this idea uh, but there is a bunch of insurance issues related to obviously his work outside of wrestling and the movie industry and things like that. And um, this has obviously been a huge stumbling block for getting like movie stars back as wrestlers before, but they have overcome it before, but we're, it's gonna have to wait and see about what projects he's got on the go at the time. And there's, there's a lot of issues revolving around that. So I wouldn't count on it, but further on this story, Paul Heyman recently spoke to Ryan Satin saying that uh, it was actually The Rock's idea to have this match. Now he says that Roman Reigns didn't call out The Rock. The Rock went public begging for a WrestleMania match with Roman Reigns. So, bunch to break down here. Um, so The Rock versus Roman Reigns, likely the match that WWE want for next year's WrestleMania. It would be absolutely huge, uh, especially if they've got crowds back. I doubt The Rock would be interested in doing it if there wasn't a crowd there. Um, obviously there's a lot of issues with the insurance policies and what is going on in his career outside of wrestling at that time, but it looks like this Goldberg thing might be hinting at a little bit of a backup for WWE maybe in the fact that they could go back to that Roman Reigns versus Goldberg match that they so desperately wanted at this year's WrestleMania. So is Goldberg appearing on the screens them just sowing seeds for a possible future match along the way or is this just WWE throwing stars out there, trying to get people talking. Let me know down in the comments below what you think is gonna be happening and which of those matches would you prefer? Roman Reigns versus The Rock? That's the one I definitely want. Or Roman Reigns versus Goldberg? Let me know in the comments down below. But speaking of Paul Heyman, he has recently also been interviewed by The Bleacher Report where he was talking about Ronda Rousey. Now he's said that he has worked with Ronda Rousey backstage in the past and he's always admired her skills obviously she's brilliant um and he also revealed that he would never limit any contribution that he could make to ronda rousey's presentation or ronda rousey's vision for herself in wwe or outside of wwe now the wording at the end there is quite interesting that could be sort of Heyman's way of saying hi ronda you want to get involved come find me let's do something or it might just be Paul Heyman being Paul Heyman and trolling the interviewer and the fans and just sort of getting people talking, which is what he loves to do. Um, so I personally think Paul Heyman managing Ronda Rousey would be very interesting. 
I love the fact that he's completely changed his managerial dynamic with Roman Reigns when you compare it to what he's been doing with Brock Lesnar in the past and I could see him doing that yet again for Ronda Rousey. It's just something new so it's not just like the female Brock Lesnar, uh, just a whole new presentation style. And I would be really into that, to be honest. Seeing Ronda Rousey come back as a heel with Paul Heyman by her side, I think that would be really good fun. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments below. So next up, it looks like Raw Underground is no more. Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter is reporting that the slow decline of Shane McMahon's Tyler Durden-esque Fight Club has got there in the end and WWE are cancelling it completely now. It's been a bit of a slow decline in August. They cut three segments from the show for no real reason. They know, well, they didn't say what the reason was. Nobody really knows. In September, they cut it completely from the show, but that was definitely because of the global bastard outbreak that happened backstage. Obviously, a lot of Raw Underground depends on the developmental talent who are working quite closely with each other in the performance center. So for health reasons, they definitely had to shut that down. But all of those people have since clear, been cleared and tested ne negative. So they definitely could have brought it back, but it seems like they've just decided not to. Now, some of the Raw Underground regulars were obviously featured in the WWE draft, um, like guys like Baba Kato and Arturo Ruiz and Riddick Moss have all been drafted. Uh, no word yet as to what will happen with them on the main roster outside of Raw Underground. But Raw Underground, as an idea, as an experiment, is over from this point on. Um, bit of a mixed bag, I guess, for Raw Underground. Came in with a lot of hype, and it was just a bit weird. Never really presented like long-term storylines or anything. It was just an odd little venture. I, I mean, I don't blame them for trying new things, especially now you may as well. Why the hell not? There's nothing else you can do. Uh, but yeah, this one didn't really work. So it's no for me not really a big loss for Monday Night Raw But let me know what you think down below. Will you miss Raw Underground? Will you miss Dabeb Kato and Braun Strowman moving to Raw for no reason and Dolph Ziggler looking like a badass for the first time in his life? Let me know in the comments below. So Smackdown was last night Of course, it was the season premiere of Smackdown on Fox uh, it had a bunch of matches. We saw Lars Sullivan beat Jeff Hardy. We saw the Street Profits beat Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode to retain the SmackDown uh, Tag Team Champions, of course. We saw The New Day going up against Cesaro, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura and Sheamus. Uh, before the match, they had a sort of five minute speech. So it was a really emotional speech going through their six years together, how they came about. It was a really, really good speech. I definitely recommend to go and watch it. And at the end of it, it was all very emotional as well. Uh, Biggie thanking uh, Kofi and Xavier, just saying that they like you can't thank them enough for what they've done, and yeah, it was just a really really nice moment. WWE are definitely not done with the New Day; they will be coming back to this at some point. But I just thought this was a really really nice moment for them to say thank you not only to themselves, to each other, to to the fans as well. It was just a really really nice moment. I really liked it. Um, but the biggest takeaways I would say coming out of SmackDown were. Roman Reigns going up against Braun Strowman, obviously, for the Universal Championship. Now, Braun kind of got a bit of offense in towards the beginning, ended up like buffing him over the uh, barricade on the outside and things like that. But Roman Reigns brought back that low blow kick out and ended up getting him in a guillotine choke and tapping out Braun Strowman. And then after the match, he got a chair and he destroyed Braun Strowman. Goodbye, Braun. See you on more. Um, during this bit as well, Jey Uso came out and Roman Reigns is basically just saying to him that like if I can do this to him, I look at the size of him, if I can do this to him, imagine what I'll do to you at Hell in a Cell. And Reigns eventually offered the chair to Jey Uso saying like this is how we feed our family. And at the end of it, Jey ended up attacking Roman Reigns, hitting him with some super kicks and then wailing on him with a steel chair until a bunch of refs came in to break it all up. Loving the way this is going, still building towards this Hell in a Cell match. Uh, it's something completely different that we've not really seen before. Roman Reigns is playing it perfectly, Jeyus is playing it perfectly. Good stuff all around. Um, but the biggest, I guess, thing for the future coming out of SmackDown is Daniel Bryan obviously returning. He did a big return promo saying he's excited to be back, hyping up the SmackDown draft picks and things like that. Eventually though, Roman, uh, Seth Rollins ended up coming out and trying to get Daniel Bryan to 
join his flock for the greater good. Obviously, Brian said this was dumb. Uh, they ended up having a bit of a ball and Brian got the upper hand, like did the yes kicks on Rollins and Rollins ended up retreating down the aisle to the back when out came Dominic and Rey Mysterio. They sort of back Rollins off down to the ring. They have a bit of a stare down and then out comes Murphy who attacks Seth Rollins, chases Seth Rollins out of the Thunderdome. And then at the end of it, um, Murphy held out his hand to Ray and Dominic, offering it uh, the sort of peace, peace offering, giving him the handshake, but Ray and Dominic refuse the handshake and walk away. So obviously they are not done entirely with the uh, Ray, Dominic, Seth Rollins, Murphy feud that they've just lifted from Raw and dumped down onto SmackDown. But it looks like they're shoving Daniel Bryan into the mix of this and it looks like the longer term feud coming out of it Looks like it's going to be Seth Rollins versus Daniel Bryan, which to be quite honest with you, I am all for. I think they can have an absolutely fantastic run together. Matches themselves will be absolutely brilliant and it'll be interesting to see where the build is. So that's about it looks like WWE is aiming for, for Daniel Bryan's return on SmackDown. Now moving away from WWE for a bit, over to AEW. Um, Miro, also known as Rusev, obviously, was on a Twitch stream yesterday and let something slip about a certain Benjamin Carter, who you might remember from his match on the AW Late Night Dynamite show that they had uh, when we went up against Scorpio Sky. He had an absolutely brilliant match, kind of came out of nowhere and sort of set the internet alight with praise for him. Now, a week after that, he ended up getting testing positive for the global bastard and it was sort of up in the air as to where he was going to end up. But Fightful Select were reporting at the time that both WWE and AEW were looking to sign him to a contract. Well, Miro on Twitch, he let slip that Benjamin Carter had signed for WWE. He says, well, in response to a fan who was sort of praising him as like a promising young talent and a new up and comer, Rusev said, Miro said, I should say, I know, but we lost Ben Carter. He's gone to the dark side. I'm presumably referring to WWE. I mean, good luck to him. I was really impressed with his stuff. So Ben Carter, it looks like off to WWE. Now he did train at the Black and Brave Wrestling Academy, which is the one that's run by Seth Rollins. So obviously he's got a little bit of an in there. And yeah, his match on that uh, Late Night Dynamite probably set the internet on fire. So it'll be really interesting to see what he does in WWE. You assume he's going to end up in NXT at some point, uh, but he's definitely one to look out for. Now, finally, now this was spotted by Andrew Pollard, who is a writer for WhatCulture.com and he does some of the interviews on YouTube as well, you might have seen. Now, basically we're wondering, would WWE be petty enough to feature a knockoff animated version of one of their rival company's biggest stars on WWE Storytime. So Andrew noticed he was watching through the latest season of Storytime and there was a certain recurring character that is a bit of a sort of no-name loser and he's shown in the performance center and in indie shows like skits in stories told by Kevin Owens and Xavier Woods. Well, he has a remarkable likeness to Kenny Omega. Um, so I'm going to show you two pictures and I'm going to let you decide, okay? So this is Kenny Omega during his WWE developmental deal in 2005 when he was down in Deep South Wrestling. And this is the cartoon character from WWE Storytime. Now, the hair is very similar. The trunks, everything about that looks exactly like Kenny Omega. So is this just a slide deck on WWE? Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments section below uh, about that and all of today's stories, let me know. And you can also follow me on Twitter at FillMyChambers and you can follow everyone at WhatCulture at WhatCultureWWE. Make sure to subscribe to the video, like the video. Uh, head on over to Kayfabe News as well on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Kayfabe News for all of your satirical wrestling needs. And most importantly, go and have yourselves a bloody good day, everyone. Goodbye, thanks for watching.